Is it rolling, Bob? That's out. It's rolling. YouTube. YTPC. Coming to you once again from my woodlot, North Central Massachusetts. In the northeastern part of the United States. And it's a near perfect late winter, early spring day. Well above freezing, just a little icy snow remaining in patches here and there, but almost all gone now. Bright sunshine, clear sky, almost no wind. Great day to play hooky and hang out in the woods, get a little solitude. All the things that this woodlot offers, solitude is the most reliable. Most times when I come here, there's no evidence that anybody's been in here at all in the months since I last visited, which is the way I like it. Had a fire today, cooked my lunch on the grill. Did some work in the woods. I've got about 35 trees that I measure the diameter of annually. Not at all scientific, just a scattering of trees I've selected to uh, record the diameter growth over time. And today was the day I wanted to get that done. Trees aren't growing real fast. Doesn't seem to make much difference if they're big or small. They grow about, on average, one-tenth of an inch a year in diameter, breast height. I also brought the chainsaw and I cut up a few more beach blanks to turn wooden bowls at home, my latest hobby. Still, still going at it. Trying to get better, but it's been a slow grind. But I'm still enjoying it. Very quiet in the woods. I didn't put in my new hearing aids today, but I don't think it would have made much of a difference. I don't see uh, much around in the way of wildlife, very few birds. It's still early, you know, it's uh, <clears throat> mid March. Another month and a half before the uh, migration really starts to starts to kick in. We have a few birds coming back now. You know, around we see our uh, you know, American robins and blackbirds, and a few other early arrivals. But it's really late April, early May, mid May that the songbird migration really starts in, in earnest. I'm trying an aromatic today. I have a few, <clears throat> but I don't smoke them a whole lot. But this is a new acquisition. It's a, it's called Raven that I picked up at Schmidt's Tobacco and Trading Company in Albany, California, which is right next to Berkeley, California, where our daughter is. We were out there last month. I 
guess you'd call this a, a black cavendish. Look at it. Very black. Pretty sweet, but not really sickeningly sweet. I kind of like it. As I've said many times, I smoked for a while, 40 plus years ago. Came back to it recently, last couple of years now. And every once in a while I'll smoke something. It just brings back some kind of deep memory. I don't know, I can't really put a finger on this one, but clearly I had a tobacco back in those days. It was something like this. Makes me think of those days somewhat fondly. I'm beat. Stumbling around in the woods all day carrying carrying bowl blanks, heavy, wet green beach beach logs. Lugging the chainsaw around. It's a small chainsaw, but I'm getting old. None of this stuff is getting any easier. 68 now. But I like to think that uh, even though I'm uh, semi-retired and I hope not long from far away from full retirement, start taking Social Security in a couple of years. I like to think I'm not so set in my ways that I can't be open to new ideas. I find myself often doing what I might refer to as life hacking. Getting ideas, trying to try new things new ways to exercise, new ways to eat, new habits, self-improvement. I've been helped along that road by, uh, by YouTube, you know, things I've learned about pipe smoking on uh, YouTube, wood turning, which is something I just picked up very recently thanks to YouTube. I'm also following a number of uh, young guys, <clears throat> you know, in their 30s, 40s, early 40s maybe, and uh, <clears throat> pretty much my kid's age. And I draw a lot of inspiration from these guys. Uh, comes to mind, uh, well, there's Tim Ferriss and the 4-Hour Work Week. He's got some interesting ideas there. Ryan Holiday, his work with the Stoics. One I'm really reading a lot of right now is Cal Newport. He's a professor in Georgetown University in DC. Computer science guy, but he's got a whole philosophy he's been developing that applies to almost anybody, especially working people, but uh, I'm finding a lot there that I think anybody could benefit from. By the way, this is my, my rustic Rogers rarity. A chunky, uh, I don't know, what do you call this? It's kind of a square pot. It's become my pipe of choice for trips to the woods. But anyway, Cal Newport's a uh, couple of books I've read so far. One is um, Digital Minimalism. Something I know I could benefit from, and I'm sure many, many people can, is uh, yeah, the extreme that he talks about is uh, just <clears throat> going on a, a uh, digital decluttering. Just, just shut down all of your apps that you uh, use for things like social media. 
lowbrow entertainment, lowbrow news, things that just really waste your time, don't bring a lot of enrichment to your life, are distracting and keep you away from the things that are important. I'm not going full-blown uh, detox or anything like that, but I am trying to to uh, shut down the uh, things like Facebook and anything like that. Now, that's, Facebook's really about the only, other than YouTube, of course, but Facebook is probably my primary social media contact. And, uh, you know, email, of course, I've got about three or four email accounts. I guess the thing is to pay attention to what you're doing. Try, try shutting those things down, closing up the windows so you're not constantly clicking on uh, an email or a YouTube or Facebook at the slightest sens sensation of boredom. Try to focus, and that brings me to his other book that I'm reading right now. It's called Deep Work. Uh, it's about how in this distracted world of ours, those people that can really shut down the distractions and focus with incredible intensity on the task at hand, the important task at hand, what he calls deep work, uh, are those people are the ones who will prosper and succeed in life. Reminds me of a saying a friend of mine told me many decades ago was uh, in the world of the blind the one-eyed man is king. You know, very few people know how to concentrate on one important thing at a time and get it done anymore. They're off on Twitter or Facebook or uh, Instagram or TikTok or any of a large number of other distractions, television. So I'm uh, experimenting with that a little bit too. If I've got something I need to do and it's pretty important, I'm trying to sh close all my windows and just leave the one task open and and focus on it. And you could you could tell you can say shit. I'm I'm bored right now. I'm going to go click on something and you say wait nope don't don't do that. Fight it. Be disciplined. Stay focused. As Cal Newport says, it's. Uh, it's not unlike physical fitness. You have to train yourself. You have to train your brain to get accustomed to focusing. And it, you know, all this, I suppose you could go into all the neurology and stuff and talk about how uh, neural, path, neural pathways in your brain get stronger as you use them for particular kinds of tasks. So that's what I'm... Uh, doing with a lot of my thinking time these days. Coming out in the woods is a good place to do it. Plus driving too, it's a two hour drive here and a two hour drive home. So a lot of time to be alone with my thoughts. And to think about what I want to say for YouTube and the YTPC. Enjoying this pipe. It's, uh, my bar is pretty low these days. If I can light a pipe with one or two matches and, and it keeps burning, I'm happy. <laughs> I don't like a pipe that uh, tobacco that's too moist or whatever and it constantly needs to be relit. And here I am yakking away and it, the thing is still lit. But it's not harsh. No tongue bite. Well, I'm going to say goodbye. Hope my camera hasn't run out of battery yet. My phone. I've got a plane going over. There's a small airport in Orange, Mass, not too far from here. But uh, keep your thoughts and prayers with uh, the poor people in Ukraine. Maternal grandparents came from there at the near the turn of the previous century. 
So my mother was 100% uh, Ukrainian. They never thought of themselves as Russians. With that, thanks for joining me and be well.